Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on Arduino and Python programming. For this video, the objective is to demonstrate how can I actually use IR sensor together with a buzzer. For example, I'm going to configure my IR sensor as an input for my buzzer as an output. So therefore, when someone is actually near my IR sensor, it is somehow will activate the buzzer. So this will be the objective of this video. I'm going to use PyCham. Basically, the PyCham will be the programming where all the source code. Okay, the sensor will be mount at the Arduino board. Okay, so this will be the part eight series discussion on the Arduino and Python programming. If you're keen to know more about Arduino and Python programming, please take a look on the playlist under the description. You will have a better idea what is all this Arduino and Python programming. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's understand the task for, as I have briefly told you earlier on, basically when the IR sensor sends object that is nearby, okay, the buzzer will sound. Okay, so this will be the task number four. Before we go in deep detail on task number four, okay, let's take a look on this IR sensor. Okay, this actually show the IR sensor and all the key part of this IR sensor is already labeled. Okay, for example, we have this IR transmitter here and we also have the IR receiver. Okay, so basically the IR receiver is making of photo diode. Okay, we have this distance adjustment. Okay, so therefore we can use this screwdriver to turn this knob here to adjust what are the distance that we want. For example, we can adjust this distance over here from the IR transmitter and IR receiver. We can also put further away, for example, at this turn. So that basically all these requirements can be adjusted by this distance adjustment. The okay, next, the power LED simply indicate whether this IR sensor is turned on or off. So when it's on, the green LED will light up. Next on the obstacle LED, Okay, so when an object actually come into the so-called near to the IR sensor, okay, you actually will see a green LED light up over here. As for the pin, okay, so this part is connected to 5 volt. This part will be connected to the ground, while this part will be the digital output. Okay, which means that this will be the digital output from the IR sensor. For example, if we send something, it will indicate over here. If there's nothing, it will also indicate at this pin. Okay, so now I hope you have a better idea on this IR sensor. Okay, so I'm going to give you a very brief idea how does this IR sensor work. As I mentioned early on, this is basically the IR transmitter. What happened here is basically they read it out and they actually detect an object. Some of the wave will be reflected back. And basically, this is an IR receiver okay, making a photo diode. Basically, when they detect somebody actually is nearby, okay, the wave actually reflect back. And basically, this sensor detects that someone actually nearby the IR sensor. And hence, an obstacle LED will light up. And also, at the digital output, it indicates that an obstacle is nearby this IR sensor. Okay, so Hopefully, you have a better idea how does this IR sensor work. Okay, so next, we are going to connect up, okay, as shown over here. Okay, so I think by now, this shouldn't be new to you guys. Okay, so 5 volt, go to the 5 volt pin of the IR sensor, same as the ground. Okay, so over here, this digital output will be connected to pin 9. Okay, so pin 9 actually will have an indicative whether any object is near to the IR sensor. Okay, if that is, basically they will send a signal to inform the Arduino Uno board that something is actually close by the IR sensor. On the other side here, you can see that at pin 10, they are actually connected to a buzzer. Okay, so you can imagine this. 
if something actually come in between the IR sensor and basically will pick up by this digital output, okay, so the signal will go into the Arduino Uno board. And I actually code this when I actually detect something that is near to the IR sensor, I will put a 5 volt at pin 10. And basically this 5 volt will meet the current flow and will activate the puzzle. And therefore you will hear the puzzle sound out if something is actually very close to the IR sensor. I guess we are ready to do this, but before we do this, okay, so let's quickly break the task into two forms for this case here. Step number one, okay, we are going to have the reading from the IR sensor. So as I told you earlier on, if something is nearby the IR sensor, I should be able to pick up. So this is step number one. If I detect something that is very close to the IR sensor, I will pick up the signal at pin number nine. And then if after that, basically what I need to do is basically I put a five volt at pin number 10 to sound the puzzle. Okay, so this is a quite straightforward task number four. Okay, let's, before we just start the so-called coding, okay, so let's do a very simple testing to show that this IR sensor is actually working. Okay, so rather than by words, let me do a demo. How can we actually test the IR sensor? Let's take a look on the IR sensor. Let me show you how can we actually test the IR sensor. Okay, over here you can see that I actually just connected the 5 volt and the ground. I actually leave up the digital output okay, because at this moment we are not really so-called do the source code on the digital output. So at this moment, I just want to record if something is near to the IR sensor, I actually want to have the LED turned on. Can you still remember when the obstacle, when there's actually obstacle, the L, another LED will be actually turned on. At this time, you can see that one of the LED turned on. This LED actually indicate the IR sensor is power on. Okay, it's not the obstacle LED. So therefore, when an object is near to the IR sensor, okay, so another set of LED, okay, which is not light up, which is further up here, is supposed to light up. Okay, so let me do this test. For example, I put my breadboard near to the IR sensor, and the IR sensor doesn't detect the black box. What can I do is basically test the the distant pin over there. Okay, I can actually turn the distant pin over there to see whether they can adjust to detect the black box now. Let's see. So let me turn a few round here to see whether can I actually detect the black box. Okay, so now I'm able to detect the black box now. So when I remove the black box, you can see that it indicates that no obstacle in front. When I put the black box near, it indicates that something is actually in front of the IR sensor. And I will remove it away. Okay, so basically, this is how we can actually set the IR sensor. So now my IR sensor is ready. And let's take a look on the source code in order to understand better. Let me explain the source code. Okay, in fact, this example is actually quite similar with my previous example. In my previous video, what I actually do is basically I have this push button. If someone press the push button, the buzzer will sound out. Can you still remember? Okay, if not, okay, you can actually take a look on my previous video. For this example now, it's slightly different. Instead of push button, I actually has a IR sensor. Okay, so for IR sensor, when something is actually near the IR sensor, I detect it and then there, for after that, I actually execute the puzzle, which means that the puzzle also sound out. So you can see over here, basically is the push button change to IR sensor. So the source code, you can imagine that they are actually quite similar. Nevertheless, let me quickly explain the source code. Okay, so the first two lines is basically all those import time, import all the digital input, digital output, all from the AADF framework. As I mentioned on my previous video or all the videos, okay, basically, if you need this file and Python file, send me an email. I will send a modified version to you guys. Okay, so this line here actually indicate that the Arduino Uno board is actually at COM7. Okay, so these two lines, 
basically indicate that I actually configure the puzzle as an output. I configure my IR sensor as an input and the puzzle is actually located at pin 10 as for my IR sensor is located at pin 9. So imagine this, you can imagine IR sensor when someone is near the IR sensor, pin 9 will pick up and then pin 9 pick up is supposed to give a 5 volt to pin 10 which on the other hand will activate the puzzle because the puzzle is configured as an output. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a better idea okay, why we set input and output and puzzle is linked to pin 10 as for IR sensor is linked to pin 9. Okay, so this basically start the controller and also start all the monitoring because we have an input and therefore we need to have some form of monitoring. Okay, if not, whatever that is actually at the input, I will not be able to know the information. And hence, once I have input, I must activate my monitor. So this line here, you can block your IR sensor to sound puzzle. Okay, so this line actually print up to show it to you that we are ready to test the IR sensor and also the puzzle. If anything near the IR sensor, again, the puzzle will sound. If this will be true, and then this IR sensor detect if something that is near, okay, they will be greater or equals to one. So when an object is near to the IR sensor, they will be greater or equals to one. And therefore, this will be true. And thereafter, the puzzle will turn on. They will turn on for five seconds. After that, this is actually a timer. Imagine that they will go like five, four, three, two, one. And basically after that, the puzzle will turn off. And then this will break, which means that they actually break this so-called this loop here. After that, okay, basically will be at the controller shutdown. Okay, so over here, you can imagine that basically they will only execute this for only one time. Okay, basically this is what happened here. So once you know the idea of the source code, okay, we are ready to run this program. Okay, remember always okay, set this to current. Okay, so once we set this to current, okay, we can click this run here. Give it a few seconds for you to run. So basically, do you want to run the bot component tester? Do, do we want to test the part? Okay, let's say we want to test the part. Let's click yes. Okay, so we are ready to test the part. For example, let's test the output first, okay, which is the puzzle. So when I actually press two, okay, and I actually press enter, you can hear the puzzle. So the puzzle is working perfectly all right. So now we are testing the input, which is the IR sensor. So therefore I press three over here to test the IR sensor. After that, I press the enter to see the IR sensor. Let me show you how to test the IR sensor. Okay, so in order to test the IR sensor, what you need to do is basically, you need to bring your hand near to the sensor. And basically you can see that when my hand is near the IR sensor, you can see that the another green LED will actually light up when my hand is near to the IR sensor. So with this, I'm actually testing whether the IR sensor is working properly or not. Let's come to the pie chain view. Okay, so from here, I know that my IR sensor is working well. How I know? Basically, you can see that from here, this IR sensor, the record count is fine, which means that just now my hand is actually blocking the IR sensor for five times. Okay, so this means that the IR sensor is able to detect when actually something actually block basically the light. So for this case here, it proved that my this IR sensor is working well. If your IR sensor is not working well, probably the record count is zero. So when this is actually zero, which means that the device is not really working well. So therefore you need to properly troubleshoot on your so-called connection on the IR sensor and maybe also the programming source code over here. But for my case, the IR sensor is working perfectly all right and I'm ready to move on. So in order to ready to move on, I just hit enter here to continue as it showed you over here. And then next, I actually press quick 
okay, so that I can quit this testing process and ready to test whether my source code is working or not. So basically I press the quit. And from here you can see that the monitoring is running. So basically once the light of the IR sensor is blocked, okay, the buzzer should be sound out. So basically for this part here on this pie champ, I'm done. So now let's move over to this Arduino Uno board to take a view how I actually test the IR sensor plus the puzzle. Okay, let's move over. Okay, now we are at the IR and also the Arduino Uno board and you can also see the puzzle. So let's take a close look. When my hand is near to the IR sensor, okay, the IR sensor will detect it and the puzzle will sound. Can you see here? So with this, I have complete the lab. Okay, so basically you can see that the buzzer will sound for 5 seconds. After 5 seconds, it actually exit the loop session. Okay, so with this, I end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. I see you guys soon. Bye for now.